especially welcome the leadership and the entire membership of the Bring Back Our Girls movement uh, family in Abuja, the lead family, like we all know. Uh, they have been our greatest pillar of support. And uh, I cannot imagine this thing happening without them. So welcome and thank you very much. Gentlemen of the press, 10 years too long, too hard to bear. This has been the text of a world press conference delivered by the Kibaku, otherwise known as Chibok, or better known as Chibok, Area Development Association, CADA, on the occasion of the 10th year commemoration of the adoption of the Chibok girls held at the Unity Fountain, Abuja, on Sunday, April 14, 2024. Today marks exactly a whole decade since the sad but unimaginable events of the night of April 14 to 15, 2024, when 276 of our daughters were abducted in their school, the government signed secondary school to work. 194 of them are back, but about 82 of our beloved daughters are still missing and unaccounted for. Within this time, 48 parents have lost their lives, mostly due to heart conditions and other health-related reasons. Three parents have been killed in subsequent Boko Haram attacks in Chibok and have been victims of vitriolic campaigns aimed at dissuading us from pursuing the cause of our daughters and their welfare coupled with the broken promises from both the federal government of Nigeria and the Borno State government. The first thing I want to dwell on in this World Press Conference is the pervasive failure by the Borno State government in this unfortunate saga. We, the Kibaku, are deeply disappointed with the pervasive failure by successive governments of Borno State since 2014 in their inability or refusal or failure to rescue all our daughters for a decade now. And the obvious lack of interest by these governments to bring in the matter of insecurity and banditry in the Northeast, especially in the Chubok area, to an end. The saddest part for us as a people in this saga is that the official narrative from the Borno State government seems to always take precedence and the center stage are mostly believed and most of the time even amplified, unfortunately, by the media without fact-checking rather than the objective and the verifiable truth as expressed by the parents as well as the community and other interested parties involved. Even our daughters that escaped within the last three years until very recently have been secretly kept in so-called transit camps in Meduguri, sometimes along and together with their captors. Following the persistence and insistence by some of the parents to see their returnee daughters the government of Borno State, under the leadership of Professor Zulum, the Kibaku community hereby seeks answers to the following piercing questions as a matter of urgency. Number one, under what guise and by what legal authority did the Borno State government continue and illegally and obnoxiously use the word marriage? between the returnee girls and the so-called so-called repentant terrorists. Number two, how are the girls' voices and or that of their parents or guardians being incorporated into the decision-making processes about their rehabilitation and reintegration into society? We want to know. Number three, 
and their support services by the Borno State government, specifically tailored to address the psychological and emotional needs of these girls who may have experienced trauma during their captivity? Number four, what measures have the Borno State government put in place to ensure the safety and security of the girls, both in Maiduguri and upon their eventual return to Chuba? Number five, how can the parents and or the guardians of the girls be actively involved in the planning and implementation of the programs aimed at their rehabilitation and reintegration into society? Number six, are the girls currently residing in Meduguri housed with the repentant, so-called repentant Boko Haram uh, terrorists, or are they housed separate, separately? That's why I said these are piercing questions. They're not yes or no questions. Seven. Do the girls have the freedom to return to Chiba whenever they wish, or are there restrictions on their movement? Number eight, what is the rationale for keeping these girls in Maiduguri rather than allowing them to return to their families in Chiba or to any place of their choice for that matter? What activities, number nine please, what activities and or support systems are available to the girls while in Maiduguri, we ask? Number 10, are they receiving education, vocational training, or are they employed in any capacity, and by whom, and for what purpose? 11, 12, I beg your pardon. Are there opportunities for the girls to actively participate in decision-making processes that affect their lives and future? such as educational and vocational training, now that they are all of age. They are of age. 13. Can the Borno State Government provide transparency regarding the situation of the girls? Is there any information being withheld from the public that the parents should be aware of? 14. How can the Kibaku community Kibaku Area Development Association, the, 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 the community association, be involved in supporting the girls transit back into society and help to create supportive environment for them upon their ultimate return. Next, we want to place specific demands. Following these 14 questions, we the Kibaku Area Development Association, CADA, would love or would like to place the following specific demands on the Borno State Government as well as the Federal Government of Nigeria. Let me start by saying on this occasion of the 10th year commemoration of the adoption of our daughters, we strongly challenge governments at all levels, federal, state, and local, to work towards bringing a closure, one way or the other, to this fiasco. To do nothing, as it is now, seems for the past one decade, is completely unacceptable, and we make the following additional demands on government. Number one, the urgent release of the rescued girls in custody of the Borno State government to their families, and not to anybody, no, the terrorists, the so-called repentant terrorists that were in the first place their abductors. The girls' consent and that of their parents or guardians were not sought before they were abducted. It's unimaginable. As such, what is the basis to seek their consent before they are allowed to be returned to their parents? Number two, we demand a formal rebuttal and apology to all the families and the community at large for the illegal cohabitation encouraged by the Borno State government by calling the tourists their husbands and the failure to do so may result in legal action against the Borno State government and all its officials who have used this insulting and demeaning terminology to describe a very ugly and painful situation. 10 years, too long, too painful to bear. 
Number three, we demand that we are availed all the rescued daughters at home and in school for any organization or group that wants to support them. There should be no restrictions. But no state does not hold any monopoly over them. Anyone that needs to talk to the media, or anybody for that matter, wherever they are, must be allowed and always be let to do so without let or hindrance. What we understand today is that these girls are held a second time in captivity, this time by government. Number four, we need an upgrade of the secondary school in Chuba from where they were removed. Because for those who have visited Chuba recently would understand what, what we're talking about here. The so-called rehabilitation is it, it, only good on, on pages of the newspapers and on the electronic media. We want those schools to be properly rehabilitated and put to better use. Number five, immediate disclosure of all the names of the daughters reported to be dead as witnessed and established by their classmates and friends while in captivity. There's no dodging the bullet here. Two of the parents have since gotten the news of the passing of their daughters and have brought a closure on their own. Sadly so. The parents and the community leadership want this position taken immediately rather than the endless and the hopeless waiting that we think is playing the ostrich. Number six, our rescued daughters and some parents already have phone contacts are in communication with some of the unaccounted girls, believe it or not. Also, investigation of some other sources of funding for the daughter's scholarship without details because some are getting calls from abroad by families and faith-based organizations that are said to be sponsors. We need to know who these sponsors are and the Kibaku community would need to document and properly appreciate these sponsors. The Borno State is simply too secretive. Number eight. The Kibaku community should be open to everyone that wants to access it legally. I, as national president of the Kibaku Area Development Association, I know what I go through every time I need to go to Chibok, and I need to go to Chibok. I have to go to Chibok. I cannot be national president and sit down in Abuja or Lagos where I spend a lot of time. So, we are calling that the government should make everyone that wants to have access, legal access. I'm not asking for, for, for armed men to go in there. Without any security threat, to allow the media, the NGO, and other well-spirited individuals that want to come and support the schools, the parents, even the IDPs, staying within the camps in the area and the host communities. We are presently under siege on the pretext of security protection while Boko Haram continues to attack our towns and villages freely. Anytime they want to attack, they are there. If I want to go, they search me to my underwear. Number nine, for the obtained time, we demand the re release of the General Sabo Fact-Finding Committee Report of 2014. I repeat, we demand the release of that fact-finding report. That report or that committee was charged with finding out the circumstances that made that rather sordid and infamous, infamous, infamous event possible. Till today, till today, because I went to high school in southern Nigeria, I have classmates from southern Nigeria who do not believe that that abduction took place till today. They challenged me in uh, old boys' association meetings and said, oh, that you're, you're, you're shouting your head hoarse over nothing. So we demand that that General Sabo report be made public because there's a lot in there that will tell us what exactly transpired on April 14, 2014.
The committee indeed carried out its assignment, submitted the report to the federal government. But 10 years on, the federal government has not had the courage, nor seen the overriding public interest and the need to make the report public. While 82 of our daughters are still unaccounted for, and 48 parents plus three that were in addition killed, making 51, have since gone to the land beyond. Finally, appreciation. And this is very sober. I want to, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, the National Executive Council, and the entire members of the Kibaku Area Development Association, popular, popularly known as CADA, and indeed the Kibaku community worldwide, thank and appreciate the Nigerian security forces, especially the fighting men and women on the field for their commitment and sacrifice in fighting Boko Haram terrorists in particular and in the rescue of the Chubok girls, we remain grateful and appreciative. And on this occasion of the 10th year commemoration of the Chubok girls' abduction, we, the Kibaku people again, wish to place on record the strongest, most resilient, and ever supportive bring back our girls' family of Abuja, the lead family. The one in Lagos, the one in New York City, and indeed the world over, for being the shield of armor in defense of the struggle for the release of the 276 girls. Abducted 10 years ago. May God Almighty reward your labor of love and bless you all. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Long live Borno State. Long live the Chubok Local Government Council. And long live the Kibaku Area Development Association. And thank you very much. Sacrifice for a campaign on my part and on the part of the genuine people who joined the advocacy. And we campaigned and campaigned. I remember six months into the campaign, some of them said to us, what are you still doing here? Carry your mat and go away. The girls are all gone. Are you not community members? Or you're the other side of the community members? Are you the real side of the community members that genuinely stood for Chippewa girls? I'm asking you, because you were there. When they said to us, take your mat and go away, the girls are gone. And we said, show us proof that the girls are gone. Whatever you claim, you should give us evidence for your claim. And when we said, show us proof that the girls were gone, they had no proof. So we said, we would continue to insist on action for Chibok girls. We insisted on action. Seventh month, eighth month, ninth month. I, for example, had thought that our campaign was not going to be more than two months at the maximum. I thought two months and we'll be done with this because all we needed was for government to show full responsibility concerning Chibok girls. What was going to be our a business continuing to stand if government had taken very strong responsibility for what it needed to do to bring the girls back. So it was, it was the only reason I continued to stay here and to advocate. You see Sambido. Kozaya Sambido. That man died for this cause. A real community leader. While others were busy looking for all kinds of things on the back of their own children, Sambito gave his life up for cheaper girls. Sambito, community leader, and yet one of the greatest leaders I have ever known in my life. I could write a book on leadership on Sambito, Hosea Sambito. May God always remember his family. Because he died for Chibok girls. It was here that Sambido became sick. There were times when Sambido would cry and hold me. And I would feel like he's about to kill me. But it was his way of expressing the pain. 
he was going through for his people. Because of some people who said, Madam Obi, you know if you should stop telling them to bring back our daughters, they would just ignore us. Because according to Reverend Mark Enoch, Enoch Mark, eh? he had said to me, he said, the only reason you have to come out to be doing this with us is because we are poor people. Ah, that was it. That was like a dagger to my chest. How can you batter your citizens to the point where they think that because they are poor, it is okay for you to neglect them? That really upset me. And I said, no. I disagree that because you're poor, you should be ignored. So what we did, essentially, and I'm bringing this to a close very quickly, what we did was to say, if because Chippewa girls' parents and the community are poor, because our leaders consider them, or with apologies to my husband, who says we don't have leaders, we have rulers, and it takes a research paper to know the difference between a leader and a ruler. So these rulers could neglect Chibo girls and their parents and the community on the basis of their status in life. I said, no, this is not acceptable. It was part of the reason. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, before Chibo girls advocacy, I owed obligation that I was meeting to presidents around the continent. I used to go to the countries of these presidents and spend 10 days in each of the countries. I dropped it because I was that offended by the fact that girls who went to school, I used to be a minister of education. The North is way behind in terms of girls being in school. We worked on the matter of girls' education during my time as minister. And here I was being told that because families are poor, the girls they sent to school were abducted. And there is not a word, not a word. There was not even an acknowledgement. It was not until three weeks after girls were abducted that we heard the voice of our president at that time. Three weeks after. Now, research shows that a search and rescue operation must be mounted within three days of abduction. Otherwise, the chances of success become limited. So when they said, carry your mat and go, we, and they, they didn't give us proof of life, uh, that proof of a death, we said, we will stand. And we stood. It took two years. And I remember the day that Amina Ali Nkeki, how many of you remember that day here in this play, in, on this ground, when the news of Amina Ali in Keki came. I still look at the picture. I was neither crying nor laughing. I, the expression on my face was a, was a case of, oh God, thank you. Thank you because it is true that these girls can still be rescued. And we stood. And over time, we have the kind of number that we've been mentioning. But there are still 82 girls cannot be accounted for. We have made our statement, the chair of our strategic team, if, if the government of Nigeria were run like BBOG, when we run it in, on this unity fountain, it would be an effective country. It would be a country that works. It was right here, in the open ground. You came out of your car, you joined us. No, 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 no silliness around the things that we did here. We stayed. And we said, more would come. Do you all remember when we had to go to Sambisa? They thought they were going to shame us by saying, if you doubt that we're doing anything, come with us to Sambisa. An adversarial government, a government that looked at us with hostility, asked us to go to the war front with them. They wanted to be able to say, you see, we told them to come and they said they can't come. But we said, let's go. 
we went. We flew with them over Sambisa to show you how risky that thing that we did was. I think it was less than a day or within the same day of our returning from that surveillance with the Nigerian Air Force over Sambisa. A plane, a fighter jet or something was taken down. Was taken down. When I hear Nigerians talk anyhow about Chibo girls, all I do is pray for them. I pray for those Nigerians. If there, there are many ways to put a curse on yourself. Many ways to put a curse on yourself. But the worst way to put a curse on yourself is to not be bothered about what has happened to your fellow human being. To be callous toward your fellow human being. You already cursed yourself. Nobody needs to curse you. And here we are today. The key message, disclosure, accountability, closure. Disclosure, accountability, closure. Disclosure, accountability, closure. That is what governments do in order to earn the legitimacy that citizens can confirm. There's a government in office, it knows exactly what to do. Dockers and Mrs. Samuel, they are human beings. The annoying thing is for rulers of a country to place their own children above the children of those they govern. No. The child of a senator, the child of a member of the house, the child of the governor, the child of the president, the child of the vice president is not in any way superior to any of our Chibogians. Not one bit. Therefore, everything that needs to be done in order to account for the outstanding girls and bring back as many of them that can still be brought back, everything that must be done to then give closure to this saga, it will never end in our hearts, but at least the actions necessary in order to make it a saga that is not an open wound forever for a country like ours will need to be done by this administration. And to do that, we highly just recommend that the Chipot Girls Parents Association are the co-owners of this advocacy going forward. Going forward, this belongs to the parents and your community. At a time when you had no agency, we stepped in in order to give you voice. We have done that. We have done that. Have we not done that? We've done that. This matter is now your matter. More powerful than you can imagine. You're the ones carrying the pain. Wombs of cheap work mothers gave birth to children. Let those wombs speak now. We have come as far as we could come for you. Can you imagine seven years of our lives? People were thinking that because they were not coming here with camera, that we stopped. We kept coming to Unity Fountain every day of our lives until the COVID happened. Every day. Every day we were here. And then I hear some Nigerians who would lie to themselves and say, oh, it was only when the other administration was in office. How could they lie so boldly? Every day we were here. We spent our lives here for year after year. It is now time for the Parents Association of Chibo Girls. You must take over this fight and take it over in a way that shows clearly 
that you're not willing to tread to tread your daughters for a mess of pottage. Chibot girls and the advocacy that we did here was entirely self-funded. Not a dime. As a matter of fact, not only was it self-funded, and not a dime from anybody was given to me or to any of the people that you see here today. None. We rejected and refused. And we said we don't need anybody's money. In order to come here, use our voice and stand for cheap pockets. That's exactly what we did. The UN said to us, we can find resources for your movement. We said we don't want. I didn't. I said to the movement, I said, the minute we make this thing about money, it is over. And some of the people quarreled with me and said, so how are we going to do the things we do? I said, whatever we cannot do by ourselves is not worth doing. what happened here. That's what happened here. I am so proud of the genuine members of BPOG who did not for one day make a mess of themselves. Standing for their fellow human beings and standing all the way without compromising that integrity and dignity of life. So, my dear brothers, my dear sisters from Chiba, thank you for calling us to be your partners as we have commemorated this 10th anniversary. I don't want to come 10 years from now still unsure of what the end game has been concerning our girls. That's why that closure part of the matter is a matter you must push. The government has a duty to give you scenario planning, to give you some perspective on what is possible and what is not possible. But to keep you uninformed about anything is a big no-no. We will be on the sidelines and fighting along with you. But this fight now belongs to you. And you must fight it all the way. Chibok family. I remember the, I think it was the, was it the Queen of Sweden? One of the Nordic countries gave me a recognition that was accompanied. Where is the, is, um, Alan, Anessa? Alan, where are you? <laughs> Alan, Manessa. Do you remember, was it the Queen? of Sweden or I think it's Sweden yes that gave me a C10 award and then they sent a message and said it is accompanied by a ten thousand dollars for anybody who is giving such an award what did I immediately do I sent it to the Kada Association and I said we as BBOG we don't have an account for anything because we don't want anybody paying any money into anything. We don't need it. When we need to do anything, our banners, our t-shirts, we will carry baskets around contributions. That's what we did here. The real Nigeria was born here. So if there's anything that Chibok girls achieved, it was to show us that Nigerians can birth a real nation. The Chippewa girls birth a nation here at the Unity Fountain. It was one of the proudest moments for something so tragic. So, my summary is, brothers and sisters, your work is cut out for you. And especially you, the fathers. Because fathers have a special relationship with their daughters. If any of you would trade that girl off, those girls off, for positioning with government of any kind, there is a price to be paid. Because nothing that we did here concerning Chibokets had anything, any relevance to all of these things that people just go around blabbing. None. So we're looking to you to, in all purity of intention, 
take up the fight for your daughters. And God, whom my husband has incredible confidence, and he carries me along with him in that confidence. You know, it's harder for somebody who is in the space of analysis and logic to, to believe when certain pronouncements around God are made. But guess what? I always believe. Because I know that the scientific analysis, all the things that we know in a logic, they are subject to the power of God. So when my husband has prayed and said, there will be miracle, I dare say to you, I believe in miracles. And I hope you do also. What are we demanding? What are we demanding? What are we demanding? When shall we stop? That's your word. That's your inheritance. You will not stop until your daughters are back and alive. God bless you all.